Hi, welcome to another episode of Art Matters. I'm Wayne Quackenbush, your host. Uh, I'm also the president of the Portsmouth Arts Guild, and I run a place in Newport where I support local artists. Today we have a couple of new guests. Uh, our first guest is uh, Lillian Schreiner, who I met through social media. Uh, I'm not exactly sure how that happened, but these things kind of grow gradually. Um, Lillian lives in two hemispheres. She spends a lot of time in Newport and Rhode Island and Providence, and she also spends a lot of time in Brazil. And currently, you're studying at uh, Salve Regina University for uh, Masters of Holistic uh, Counseling uh, degree. Um, you want to tell us a little bit about your travels? I know you've been to Australia and Canada and you've studied all the, these different places. That's correct. Uh, welcome to the show. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you so much. Thanks for having me. Well, um, it started um, curiously. I mean, my dad actually graduated at NYU mm -hmm. in New York, and uh, I think that this paved the, the way uh, in a sense that I think that he inspired me to have this, this love for North America and why not. And I, so you're originally from... I'm originally from the south of Brazil okay. with German background, mm -hmm. which makes a slightly a difference on uh, what you see in terms of uh, uh, Brazil is definitely a mixture right now. It's yes. hard to say that, you know, who is who in there. But um, yeah, so I came to Salve, um, almost uh, recommended by one professor from another university who is still my friend, a PhD in uh, psychology absolutely wonderful and she saw all my background and what I was studying so far. I had courses in uh, transpersonal psychology and all this uh, stuff so she put me in touch with South Regina uh, but before this I was actually invited to work in Canada mm -hmm. with uh, a naturopathic doctor which is one one level there that is very known and uh, expanding as an area in uh, health care goals. So I worked with him, inspired to get a, homeop a homeopathy degree in there. Okay. Uh, and uh, so I did. I'm a homeopathic doctor from Canada. And so getting back here, I got in touch with the same professor. And she said, well, it looks still the same. I think that that's the program for you. And I graduated from the Master's in Holistic Counseling. I'm doing an advanced degree in mental health and uh, expressive arts now. So um, that's what I'm doing. And I think that the expressive arts came as a way for me to put together um, the counseling, which is my expertise, uh, with arts that I've been involved with since I was nine years old, mm -hmm. actually. That's family is a very, very artistic family, so to speak, and got me inspired to do my painting since nine years old. Okay. So you do holistic counseling, which you were explaining to me is uh, uh, something that concerns not only the cognitive and social and biological aspects of uh, human beings, but exactly. also the spiritual side. Absolutely. And um, so some of your, the first artwork pieces you wanted to show were uh, from what I would call your angel series. If you right. wanna hold up one to the, or both of those to the camera, make sure that they're vertical so that our cameraman can see them and you can talk about them without looking at them. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> well, it's hard not to look at them. They are always inspiring, but, um, so yeah, I think that when I started very, a long time ago, I started in oil in, on canvas yes. and I, I really loved it. Uh, as time went by, and actually as time I, that I went to uh, Salve and came to Newport, I got more inspired for the uh, watercolors, yes. which are more fluid, they have this, this movement. I was always very inspired by movement. And, and they're also uh, very spontaneous. That's correct. And you're also including pastel, you say. 
Right, lately, yes. So uh, those two are more of the late pieces. Some of them are already sold in Brazil mm -hmm. and in Canada. And some in here, somewhere in here. And uh, so they, I think that I migrated from oil to watercolors, uh, going back to pastels, which I love as well. But, uh, and I think that this mixture is kind of giving me more and more of the sense of the mixed media that I always insist on you that I, that I work with because I, I include pieces inside of another piece, which would be either um, uh, some background that you can have that's colorful or that inspires me in some way. So I think that expressive arts also relate to that in a sense that you are very drawn to your what is brought up by your intuition or the moment or what can come together so for this just, piece of art. So just part of what you do when you're counseling, when you work with people? Do you ask them to express themselves visually? That, or? that could be. Okay. That could be it. It's not mandatory. It's one of the tools that we can definitely use in counseling as well. Right. So you're also talking about uh, hidden imagery or, or background imagery. I see mm -hmm. you've used a grid. Mm -hmm. And I've seen you, I've seen your work before. You, yes. You've incorporated watercolor with a grid and, and uh, it's almost like you're reaching to complete something somehow. Right. Uh, and and Good by way. layering these things, it, it, it makes for a, a, a greater literal depth in, in the work. That's correct. Yeah, yeah. That's one of my uh, interests, I guess. And it's kind of taking what was there to another level. Yes. Literally. Now, you have a piece that you were talking about that's wood or uh i think that you're uh, you're talking about this one yes. and yeah that got inspired by wood uh -huh. i called it exile okay because it it makes a division right in the middle and if you look very carefully and yes. it requires careful looking because mm -hmm. this line in here if i'm not mistaken getting the correct one is the texture that you have and I put natural materials in there okay. which in this case is leaves okay very small leaves wow with a different uh, yeah I, and I like the idea I don't know if you caught in the angels as well the leaves. those are yes. leaves those are actual and, leaves um, mm -hmm. so that's uh, that's a secret though that's no one would know that unless you told them right? that's correct yeah, and I think that you were the one that in one of my pieces you said, yeah, and there is an L in there, and it's kind of hidden as well. Mm -hmm. Not many people would see that my initial is inside the picture, so. Right. Yeah. Yes. So that's basically how um, it goes, and I just got inspired by the lines and lines and lines, and a little bit of more texture that I added in here with the pastels. Mm -hmm. So, um, but the idea of the fine lines is always very uh, strong to me most of the time. And watercolors kind of inspire you to that. I'm hoping that this summer we can get some of this inspiration together to your guys at Art Oh, Skill right, yes. You, you wanted to talk about a, a class that you, were, you want to uh, teach or a seminar you want to yeah, hold? Yeah, we are. Uh, <coughs> trying to figure out what's the best format for that. Okay. But uh, in a way that we could put together the expressive arts with art itself, basically could be in watercolors or pastels, and obviously people who are looking or who are seeing us today would be possibly interested as well. So just keep in touch and don't forget well, that we are going you, to be there. Well, you'll write a prospectus and we'll, we'll get that into the right channels. That's uh, correct. And um, I mean, would it be in the nature of uh, creative exercises or? Yeah, I like the idea of creative and uh, inspiring exercises. Right. And uh, obviously always with the, um, the eye on a final product that would be art. 
Yeah, I can see that. I mean, I know that when I try to teach, I, I turn art into almost a game because um, I think once you get past a certain age, everybody takes things so seriously. And, That's correct. And, and it's my idea to go back to maybe before memories are before you were four years old and, and just have fun and play and, and, and communicate and, mm -hmm. and, and get stuff out there. So I know you wanted to talk about uh, your Australian uh, right. travels. Right. Those two guys were actually a product, I would say, from Australia. And, they, uh, and what brought you to Australia? Uh, actually, I was invited for a PhD in education there, right. which is still ongoing, yep. together with a project in Chile. Multiple doctorates. <laughs> <laughs> multiple doctorates and uh, multiple languages, believe me. Wow. So uh, lately I've been working with Spanish uh, clients as well. Okay. I think that's uh, a very interesting add to my profile and curriculum because um, I do believe in cultural influences. Absolutely. And uh, being able, I think that being able to hear many uh, different languages, you kind of acquire a different way of approaching people and then understand them. It changes how your brain works depending on what language you're speaking. That much I know, only, I mean, I can, I can speak art and I can speak English, so. <laughs> and I, on top of that, I think that I just use <coughs> your last uh, sentence to say that I think that art is really the language that can compound all these supposedly differences that cultural uh, or culture itself could uh, uh, give us but uh, art kind of goes and just as a straight line that everybody kind of understands and uh, talks the same language and visual communication and uh, sensibility mm -hmm. communication mm -hmm. i would say yep. so do you want to talk about the the subject matter? So, uh, yeah, and you can see that there is a very domestic theme to those two, together with the, uh, with the uh, visual of nature. Uh, this one grasps a lot of nature, which is, this is clear nature. This is Australian barks in there. Right. And a little bit of pieces in the uh, um, leaves. Um, so, Together with this, this nature, I put together the domestic feel that they have in here and here, the couple and the, uh, the uh, dog. This one has also the pastels in it, which inspired me for the dog to be this kind of fluffy element in it. And um, when you look to the couple, you see them very cozy inside of that picture, and that was the idea of the depth that you're talking about again. Right. So you see that they are kind of in a third kind of visual plane, but so to speak. at home, but with nature around them. That's correct. Yes. Which is very Australian for now, me. Now, when you do counseling, <laughs> is it usually one-on-one -on -one or is it uh, in, in groups? Or? Mostly one-on-one. Uh, -on -one. Okay. Uh, I did groups. I ran groups, mm -hmm. facilitate them. And it's not out of my reach. I think that that's something that we should do. And mm -hmm. this uh, idea that we are having here in terms of bringing art to a more sensitive slash inspired level mm -hmm. would be definitely in groups. And okay. I think that there is a richness to groups that is fantastic. Great. Mm. Well, I think that we've run out of the time that we've I'm had looking. today. I yes. appreciate your coming out today. I know it took time out of your schedule. And again, thanks for coming. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Welcome back to Art Matters. And uh, we're here with our other guest today, Wendy Davis. Uh, Wendy is a new uh, board member of the Portsmouth Arts Guild. Uh, she comes highly recommended by s several other members and also uh, has a level of experience that we really need. And Wendy, do you want to tell us a little about, a bit about yourself and how you came to uh, Rhode Island and to become involved with the Guild? 
Thank you, Wayne, and thank you for inviting me. Mm -hmm. I became involved with the Guild because Susie Graham invited me, a friend of mine. Okay. And I believe that she invited me because of my expertise in fundraising mm -hmm. for not-for-profit organizations, not so much because of my art skills. And uh, like any not-for-profit organization, the Portsmouth Arts Guild needs to pay their bills, so right. they do need fundraising. Yeah. So that's what I'm hoping to accomplish for them. Okay. So are you uh, relatively new as an artist, a kind of a fledgling artist, or, or uh, have you, are you just realizing a lifelong dream? <laughs> Frankly, I've never considered myself an artist. <laughs> okay. I, I've always been a craftsperson. I've always sewn. I, um, I'm a quilt maker, and I've been involved in other types of crafts, but this is all very new to me, okay. but something I'm truly in enjoying. Well, everything that you do can be incorporated eventually, so I, I know that you've been pretty avidly uh, taking classes and participating in the open studios that uh, we have at the Guild. And um, uh, why don't you talk a little bit about that? Sure. Um, I started at the Guild by the invitation of Susie Graham, and Susie ran a class for us in collage. So this is an example of the collage that Susie had us work on. And if you look closely, you can see there are actually leaves stuck onto the paper. Mm -hmm. So that was, that was a fun process. Um, it, was more the, it was more an experiment in a t different technique for us. So that was the first thing I ever did, the first day I arrived at the Guild. And that was in December of 2018. So after this, I brought in a painting that I wanted to copy. And this is an exact replica of a painting that I bought in Peru that I really liked. And because it's an exact copy, I don't find it that interesting because there's nothing of me in this. Oh, it's I simply a copy. So after this, I decided to uh, focus on Christmas cards. So all of okay. my friends and family got original um, artwork for their Christmas cards. And soon after that, I, I signed up for a class with Suzanne Lewis. And Suzanne teaches drawing. So this was Drawing 101 for Absolute Beginners. And the first thing that she had us do was charcoal. So this is a charcoal drawing, which I had never, oops, sorry, I'd never worked in before. And it's a copper tea kettle. The very famous copper tea kettle. Yes, I'm sure everyone at the Guild has painted <laughs> exactly. this particular copper uh -huh. tea kettle. Mm -hmm. But the challenge for me was the texture of trying to make it look like copper, trying to get the light right. So this was all about um, the technique of charcoal as well as texture. And you're using that wonderful mid-range uh, gray paper, which gives you the, the, the mid-tone, and then you go in and with your darks and your light. That's really beautifully done. Thank you, but mm -hmm. you obviously know a lot more about the mid-range paper <laughs> than I do, but yes, the yeah. paper was important, so we learned that. Yep. The next thing that I did in that same class was all about perspective. So this was supposed to teach us um, the, the table you can see is at an angle and the and it's stool. The, the one point perspective. I have an intern who's doing this exact same thing right now. Everything goes to a point somewhere. Yeah. Yes. So um, this was, th these are, are not something that you want to hang on your wall. It's more the process of, of learning the techniques. And you're so. le learning to build a picture that way. Yes. I mean, almost literally. I mean, an engineering student would do the same thing. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. Yep. And uh, Suzanne's classes are great. She's very supportive and very instructive. And this, I found a lot of fun to do. Um, Wayne I probably knows what this. Guess what yeah, that is. Yeah, That's blind contour, <laughs> which I guess is a is a a well known technique. Yes. Which the way you do this is, um, I was staring at a pineapple, but not allowed to look at the paper. Mm -hmm. So you put your pencil down once. You do not pick up your pencil as you draw this figure that you think you're drawing a pineapple, and then you, at the end you look at it and what a surprise. Um, the scribbles that are in the upper left-hand corner are, were intended to be the uh, greens, leaves. the leaves yep. of the pineapple that I thought I was covering the whole piece of paper with those. And obviously they were kind of stuck in one little area. And then I tried to do the texture of the fruit. 
Yes. And it ran off the paper, and I had no idea I was doing that. It's very cubist. Yes, but but <laughs> but um, I just thought it was interesting to see how your brain works. Yeah, but I mean, the, the fact that you have the leaves shooting out and the colors are in the right place, I mean... It, well, it, the colors were added later. I kind of cheated oh, there. Oh, I got you. This All was right. originally just pencil. I see. Okay. And then at the, because I liked the pencil drawing, I decided to add the... Um, the colors later, but I try to do that also without looking at the paper too much. Mm -hmm. So, again, a, a, an exercise in how the brain functions and Absolutely. an expression of art. It, it helps to loosen you up. Did you actually use a blindfold? No, but, okay. but, but we, we really did try very hard not to look at the paper, and it's yep. not that hard when you're staring at an object in front you know, of you. I, I have ever done that, and I've done the real blindfold, and I've also... Um, used a, a, a cloth over my hands so you can't see what your hands are doing. Yeah. Um, another exercise, and gee, I don't want to do a tangent on this, but to do it with the, your, uh, the hand you don't normally use, that, oh. that, that teaches you more than anything that uh, drawing is a lot like sculpture, that you're actually carving things out of space. And, and, and feeling the texture and, and it's, it's very freeing and a lot of people find it very frustrating because everyone is used to using their hand uh, and they kind of love the marks that it makes. So you have to go to that alien territory on the other side to get things going a little bit more up here. I love that. Thank you. I'm going to try that okay. left-handed drawing. Absolutely. If you're right-handed, left-handed is the way to go. And that, that leads me to something that Suzanne said that I thought was brilliant is she said it's not so much the finished product. It doesn't matter whether I love these things and intend to put them on my walls. It's more the process of creating yes. art that the process of observation yes. and then expressing those observations on paper that uses a different part of our brain. And because of that, artists have a lower incidence of Alzheimer's disease. That's good, a good point. Which I thought, yeah. so that inspired me to continue to do this regardless of what the finished product that's looks a, like. That's actually why Suzanne will relentlessly and uh, pursue uh, floral arrangements and painting floral arrangements because you're, you're, it, it's so difficult to match colors and to catch light and obviously you know she's masterful at it. We've actually had her on the show before. Um, but again, your, your art is not only communicating, which to me is the primary part of it, it's also learning how to see. So there's a very selfish aspect to it. And learning how it's to see opens up all sorts of pathways in your brain. So I could see how it could really help people who, who are suffering a little bit. Yes, or, or, or prevent the suffering, really. Yes, absolutely. Really. So I know that you have tons of cards, and, I, and yes. that's the first work I saw by you are your very whimsical yes. and very fun cards. Thank you. This is what I decided really is what I, the way I want to paint, other than, the, and, and these are watercolor, mm -hmm. and I like small, and I like colorful, and I like whimsical, and I think that the appropriate reaction to this is to smile or laugh, and I think that's a good thing Absolutely. to inspire in other people. Mm -hmm. So my squirrel wearing eyeglasses and carrying a coffee cup is just an example of one of the cards that I do. And not only is the squirrel wearing glasses, it's wearing very bright green glasses against an orange face. So yes. So they stand out very nicely. <laughs> yes, I, I, I do like the, um, I, I call <coughs> my line colors not found in nature. Very nice. It, because many of these colors are not found in nature. Now a lot of the, a lot of, it looks like if you're using watercolor, you must be using them like right out of the tube almost. Yes. Okay. Yes. In fact, I have a very inexpensive set of watercolor and I tend to use um, and it's those little dried circles like you used oh, in yeah. grammar mm -hmm. school. Yep. Um, so yes, primary colors, bright colors. Um, this was inspired because my mother plays the harp. Mm -hmm. And my mother also has a chipmunk in her yard that she likes. So a chipmunk <laughs> playing a harp, this was her birthday card. Wow. So I do a lot of musical instruments mm -hmm. with animals. I like to add a human element to the animals. So a lot of mine have a teacup. 
This is a, a moose, but if you look at the bottom, there's a teacup there, and it's a very it's it's tiny, but it is there. Yeah. I think of teacups as somewhat comforting, somewhat homey, mm -hmm. and it became somewhat of a signature for me that all of my animals had teacups for a little while, okay. and then I got past that. I love how the colors are flowing in this one too. You're you're getting kind of loose there. I like that a lot. <laughs> Thank you. Mm -hmm. um, so here's another teacup with an owl. Okay. So, so I'm glad you're laughing. That's I a good am. thing. So um, uh, I just, uh, I, I'm pretty prolific at these. I don't spend a lot of time. I do them quickly. And they're not, they, I know that they're not perfect. They're, it's not a perfect representation of an animal. But this is something that another member, Susie Graham, told me is if you wanted a photograph, if you wanted this to be perfect, you would take a photograph. Right. That art is not supposed to be perfect, but rather your expression of what you, the artist, see and feel. So even though my goal is eventually to be more realistic and less cartoonish, mm -hmm. I think it's, I, I, I'm just okay with the fact that they're a little cartoonish right now and they're not perfect. There's nothing wrong with being cartoonish. <laughs> and what I'm seeing here are all the colors of the rainbow not found in nature. Yes. So that is the line of my, that, that is the name of my cards is colors not found in nature. I also have to say that these, these cards have been very popular. Um, I know that we're not supposed to talk about the, the commercial aspect of things, but you, you do move these. Yes. Yes. Thank you. Um, I guess I could show a couple more. Um, this you, has been you, a popular you have one. Time. Whale. Yep. Okay. This is um, the whale was inspired because I also volunteer at New Bedford Whaling National Historical Park, and we talk a lot about the whaling that happened in the 1800s yes. and um, how damaging that was to the species and how important Absolutely. whales are. Mm -hmm. So I do paint a lot of whales. Yeah. And. Um, uh, then I, I kind of got away from the teacups tea and tried to add other human things, hence the giraffe is blowing a bubble, right. uh, bubble gum. Bubble gum. And, yeah. uh, but colors not found in nature mm -hmm. is, is what, uh, what most of these represent. Do the dots have any significance, the bubbles? Are, I, are they just, because you have the yes. whale bubbles, obviously, and then there's bubbles uh, outside of, in the corners there. To me, I think of it like confetti. It's <coughs> just a way to add a little more color, a little more sparkle. Pop, yeah, yes. and not damaging like real, real confetti. Yes, mm -hmm. yes, <laughs> and uh, colorful. Then I, I kind of got away from the dots, and it, they became splashes. All right. So the horse is a spl the horse is, has splashes, and the and the pig has splashes. So there's nothing serious about a little green pig wearing a pink hat, but um, it's not supposed to be serious. It's supposed to be amusing. Mm -hmm. I can see you. Uh, just filling up an area of the animal with with water and then letting the colors flow and see what happens. Exactly, yeah. exactly. That's how I do a yeah, lot of them. Yeah. I, I can see that it's very fulfilling, um, and and uh, you must be giggling the whole time you're making the, this <laughs> thing happen. Well, it, well, the Portsmouth Arts Guild is a wonderfully supportive and fun place to be, and um, Don't I've forget got nurturing. Yes, and I've gotten a <laughs> lot of support from the other artists who are there, Absolutely. who encourage me and suggest other animals and other colors. So I try to go with what they suggest. Uh, we probably have time for maybe one or two more. Okay. Um, a cat talking on a cell phone. Nice. Um, or a, a fox that's jumping into the teacup <laughs> in this in this case. Or What's that little bird guy? Okay, the little bird oh. is sitting on a sea otter who's eating a donut. <laughs> that's bad. And um, oh, I, I don't often frame mine. I tried framing because I don't think of these as artwork that goes on the walls, but rather greeting cards. But I right. did try to frame yeah. one, well, so we, this we, is an elephant. For, for the shows, we can talk about ways of presentation. Yes. Anyway, we've kind of run out of time. And Thank you. This has been really fun. Thank you very much for coming. I'm glad you took the time to do this. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks again for watching another episode of Art Matters with Wayne Quackenbush. See you next time.